In this week's lab, we'll be doing DNA agarose gel electrophoresis. This is a technique that is used to separate different sized fragments of DNA. DNA has a ne negative charge, and so all DNA will flow towards the positive electrode. And the fragments will be separated based on their size. Uh, smaller fragments will move faster through the gel matrix, and larger fragments will move slower through the gel matrix. So I'm going to show you how we're going to set up our gel box. We're going to be using a mini gel electrophoresis box. I have several items here. Uh, we have a micropipette for loading our samples on the gel, tips for the micropipette, um, a tip waste bucket. We have our test tube holder with our samples. We have agarose, and we have our gel running buffer. We have a power supply. Now, uh, we have several different types of power supplies. You'll see, you may see a different one in the lab, but I'll show you how to use this one today, and most of them are similar, but uh, if they're slightly different, we can work with that in lab. Um, we'll also need to wear gloves when we're working with the gel, because the gel contains ethidium bromide. And here we have the gel box, and I'll be showing you how to set this up. I'm also going to wear goggles today because uh, we will be working with a gel which contains ethidium bromide, and I don't want anything to splash into my eyes, so I'm going to wear, wear goggles for today. The gel box has a comb, which is what we use to form the wells in our gel, which is where we're going to put our sample, and we're going to be using the eight-well comb. And you'll notice that there's a screw and that this, these wells are adjustable, and that will come up later. This is a little spacer. It has a thick side, a thick side, and a thin side, and I'll show you what that is for later as well. When we pour the gel, we have a gel tray and we have a set of rubber dams. This is our lid, and the lid is connected to the electrodes, which will be attached to our power supply. And this is a safety lid, so no power will go to the unit unless the lid is secure on the gel box. This is our gel box, and if you notice, there is a leveler in the center of the box, and that's the first thing we need to do, is we need to level our gel box so that when we pour the gel, the gel will be, have a flat surface. So you'll need to adjust the screws in the legs of the gel box until the bubble is in the center of the circle of the leveler. Once you've finished adjusting the gel box and the bubble is in the center of the leveler, you're ready to pour your gel. So let's put the gel tray together. Notice that the rubber dams have a thick end and a thin end. And you want to put the dam onto the gel tray with the thick end at the top. So you just push the rubber dam onto the tray until it's secure, and then you do the same with the other side, again, making sure that the thick end is near the top. Now you're all set with your tray. The tray sits down into the gel box and should now be level, and you're ready to pour the gel. On the gel tray, you, you should be able to see a little line, and that is the pour line. You don't want to pour the gel any thicker than that. So you want to make sure that when you pour your agarose into the tray, it's below the gel line. So we'll take our agarose, and because we're, we're using ethidium bromide, we're going to wear gloves. Ethidium bromide is a potential mutagen, 
and we put it into the gel. It's used as a stain. It will bind to the DNA, and when we're done, we can view the DNA using ultraviolet uh, light, and we'll be able to see the DNA on our gel. Once you've got your gel box set up and you're ready to pour, you want to check out your comb. And this, this comb, we're going to use the eight well side of the comb, will form the wells in the gel. But before we pour the gel, we just want to make sure that there's a space between the bottom of the tray and the comb. You don't want the comb to go all the way through your gel or you'll make a hole so when you add your sample, the sample will go right through the gel. You want the sample to be um, in the gel and move through the gel matrix. So we're going to put this into our gel box, like so, and then we're going to take the spacer and use the spacer to make sure the spacer fits underneath our comb. If the spacer fits underneath the comb, then you know that um, your comb is set properly and you're going to make wells, you're not going to make holes in your gel. Now you can remove the spacer and remove the comb and you're ready to pour your gel. The other thing we should check on is the wells have to be at the negative electrode end of the gel because the DNA is going to move from the wells to the positive electrode at the other end. So we're going to just put the lid on and make sure that we have the, uh, we're going to put, when we put our comb in, it's going to be at the negative end. The black electrode here is at the negative end and the red electrode is at the positive end and there's only one way to put the lid on so you can't make a mistake. So we're, we're at the, in the right orientation, our wells are at the negative electrode. So now we're ready to pour our agarose. Don't go above the fill line. Place the comb, the eight well comb, at the negative electrode end of your gel. And you want to make sure that the comb is not jammed up against the rubber dam like this. You have to have a space between the rubber dam and the comb. Now you're just going to let that sit for about 20 minutes until the gel hardens and as the agarose hardens it will become opaque. Just make, you just want to make sure that it is hard before you remove the comb otherwise the wells will collapse. While you're waiting for your gel to harden, you have about 20 minutes, you can make a gel map for your samples as described in your lab manual and you can also prepare your samples in the sample buffer. The sample buffer contains a dye, a tracking dye, which will allow you to track the DNA as it moves through the gel matrix. And it also contains glycerol, which will make the sample heavy, so that when we add the samples to the wells in the gel, the samples will sink to the bottom of the well underneath the aqueous buffer. While we're waiting for the gel to harden, you can set up your samples. And just like in the cooking shows, we have an already solidified gel. And as you can see, the gel is opaque and it has a solidified. This is a 2% agarose gel and this gel acts as a matrix through which the DNA will migrate and will be separated by size. We're going to carefully lift the comb out of the gel, place that aside. And then we will carefully remove the rubber dams. Now sometimes you have a little bit of suction between the agarose gel and the rubber dam and you want to be very careful you don't want to break the gel. So you can carefully try to remove the suction, uh, release the suction between the gel and the dam. Another trick is to use the little spacer, the thin side of the spacer, and just 
put it down in between to release that suction between the gel and the dam if necessary. Now once these are off, you just want to make sure that you don't tip this either way or your gel could slide right off this gel tray. So we'll place this back into the gel box. And now we're ready to add our running buffer. So take your solution of running buffer and pour it into the gel box, completely covering your gel and making sure you have buffer in both of the reservoirs. The other thing you want to make sure of is that your wells, which are going to contain your samples, are completely covered. You don't want to see any pucker marks um, uh, over the wells where you haven't, they're not completely filled with fluid. So now you're ready to load your sample. And again, before you load your sample, there are a couple of things you want to make sure that you do. Once the sample is loaded, you don't want to have to move the gel box around because you could slosh the samples and they could slosh out of the wells. You don't want to do that. So make sure that wherever you, pull, you finally load the samples, that you are close enough to your power supply so that you can attach the lid, the electrodes on the lid to the power supply and you won't have to move the gel box. Also make sure the gel box is in a safe place where it won't get knocked off the bench. Again, check to make sure that your wells are at the negative electrode because DNA is negative and will travel to the positive electrode. Because again, you do not want to have to move this around once your samples are in the wells. While the gel was hardening, you prepared your samples. And you have a standard and you have a set of samples. And I'm only going to add two samples to the gel as a demonstration. But you each have two samples, and there are three of you, so you'll have six samples plus your DNA ladder standard. Each of your samples should be about 10 microliters. You should have about 10 microliters of sample left in your microfuge tube. If you don't have 10 microliters, you just have to use whatever you have left. So you're going to pipette this out into your pipette tip, and you want to avoid getting bubbles. And then sometimes it's a good idea to sort of guide the tip down into the wells while you're loading. So you have to get into a position so that you can see the wells carefully Put the pipette tip beneath the surface of the liquid and depress the plunger and go down to the second stop and pull up. Now you may see a little bit of dye, that's okay, don't worry about it. But you want to get the majority of your sample into the well. We'll do this one more time, the second sample. Again, pipette up your sample. Put the tip just into the well and load it. Now in lab, we're going to have some practice gels set up so that you'll be able to practice loading if you would like to before you actually have to do it on your gel. A couple of things to be aware of is that you do not want to poke the pipette tip um, down into the well or you'll poke a hole in the gel and then uh, your sample, it's not going to work very well. Once you have loaded your samples based on the map that you made while you were waiting for the gel to harden, you're ready to attach the lid and hook it up to the power supply. Notice that the lid has two little clips on either side. Those need to slide into the little um, knobs on either side of the gel box. So place the lid on top, slide it forward. 
and make sure that it is secure. Make sure that you don't have any leaks. And then we're going to hook up our electrodes. It's very simple. Red goes to red, black to black. And what, what you want to do before you actually plug in the electrodes is make sure that the power supply is turned off. So this was turned off before I put the plugs in because we're working with electrical source. We don't want to have any, any problems. And you'll notice that there's a caution on the side of this uh, that you're working with electricity. So we will now turn on the gel box or the gel power supply. And we're going to set it to about 100 to 105 volts. This looks like it's right about where we want it, but this is the adjustment knob if you need to adjust it. Um, if it's not exactly 100 volts, that's OK. We want it to be somewhere um, around that voltage. Notice that this switch adjusts for milliamps and volts and you want to make sure that it's set on volts so that what you're reading in the window is volts not amps. So now our gel is set. We have power going to the gel box and our samples should begin to migrate. One thing you should look for before you walk away from your gel, this is going to take about 30 to 45 minutes, and if your professor wants you to, you could actually possibly increase the voltage and do it a little bit faster, but uh, the lab manual says 105 volts, which takes about 45 to 50 minutes. Um, but, but before you leave your gel, a couple of things you can do is check to see whether or not the wires in the gel box have bubbles. And if you see bubbles around the wires, you know there's electrical current flowing. If you don't see any bubbles, then there's something wrong with the gel box and there's no electrical current flowing. Sometimes we have problems with the lid, so you really need to check that. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your samples are actually migrating in the proper direction. Once you see that, then it's OK to go away and go off to the retreat and have, have something to drink. But I wouldn't leave for more than 30 or 40 minutes. And thanks, and I'll see you in lab.